It's been a while since I've done a proper math video on my channel, and today I felt like it's time to fix that. In the process, I'll also get to look at my favorite number bigger than 1 million, which lets me include this video in the Mega Fave Numbers video list started, I, b I believe, by James Grime, who I first saw on the Number File channel. He's also known as Singing Banana. But first, uh, what are we looking at here? Well, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It says so right there. Obviously, but more importantly, it's basically a graph of all the factors of numbers. I first made this, I think, somewhere around 2007 or 2008, when I asked myself what the number line would look like if we could visualize it differently from the way people normally do. And what can I say? I'm, I'm weird. Can't help it. Anyway, I first envisioned this as if I had a quilt and the integers were represented by squares of cloth. I had the first column, which was the ones column, so I could see just a straight line. And I'll go ahead and zoom in up here at the top so we can kind of look at this in a little bit more detail. So here we go. First column is just one big line. The second column was the twos column, so every other line, uh, or every other row, the cell would be filled in. And then on the threes column, every third cell was filled. The fourth column obviously continues the pattern every fourth. The uh, fifth is every fifth, and so on. Now, it turns out that uh, I'm not very good visualizing this all mentally, but the day I thought it up, I also realized I could use Excel like this to just show me what I'm looking for. So I wrote a quick Visual Basic script that would fill out the, the Excel spreadsheet for me. And obviously, there's some limitations in using Excel, uh, namely the size. It's, um, more, it's, it's more obvious with the width. It only goes out this far. But you can imagine this line continuing further. Indeed, if it was accurately represented, it would go for infinity both this way and this way. So um, vertically and horizontally. So um, I've shown this in a couple of my videos in the past, but what is this graph actually showing? When we really look at the nitty gritties, what are we actually seeing here? What you can see is that each row can represent an integer. So this row is one. But what is actually being represented by this? Well, it's the factors. The columns are the factors that make up this integer. So one, there's one factor, it's one. Uh, for two, two has two factors, one and two. Three has two factors, one and three, but you see two is skipped. And when it comes to four, we have one, two, and four that are represented here. So this is therefore representing all the factors of integers. So the integers are the rows and the columns give us the factors for those integers. Now, the first thing that I want to point out is there's these little spikes that come out. You don't really see it very well here at six, but every six rows, there is this little spike. So six, 12, not that great in 18, but 24 and 30 and so on. And it becomes more obvious if we zoom out a bit and then scroll through, you can see that there are these spikes that come out. And when we zoom in and we look at any spike like this, that's row 60, that is a multiple of six. So every six rows, there's those little spikes. In fact, I called it a six spike when I was first looking at it because of the fact that it was on each one of those rows that were multiples of six. But the other thing I noticed is that what makes these spikes stand out so much is not just that the spikes are all here, but that the row immediately before and immediately after it usually don't have very many factors at all. In fact, I soon realized that the rows that were immediately before or after were where prime numbers were going to be found. And in fact, this led me to the conclusion that every single prime number other than two and three was of the pattern of six N plus or minus one. So if N was one, six N would be one and plus one would be seven, minus one would be five, right? And five and seven are both prime. Now, it turns out that uh, indeed it is true that all numbers that are prime numbers do fall in that format other than of course two and three. Every other prime number is indeed in the format of 6n plus or minus 1. But not every number that fits that format is going to be a prime number. For example, as we look here at 24, well, 25 gives us a factor here in row or in column 5, because we know 5 times 5 is 25. So this is not a prime number, but 23 is a prime number. Even though this is not a prime number, the numbers that come in here are going to be very, very few. 
And that's because um, you can use base six math. Um, I'm not gonna do that here, but using base six math, you can prove that any number that is of six n plus or minus one can only have factors that are also six n plus or minus one. So the only factors that can come up here are gonna be five or seven, 11 or 13, etc. So these factors are gonna be very much spread out and they're gonna be grouped here on this spike that happens every six rows. So this gives us something important to know about prime numbers. Of course, once I discovered the six n plus or minus one was related to primes, I thought, hey, I've discovered something really, really profound. But it turns out that mathematicians have known this for centuries. So no new discovery with this. But I did find something else that's interesting. Let's scroll down a bit to, um, let's look at row 120 because this has a lot. One thing that you'll notice on here is that there's a bit of a reflection both above and below this line. So if we look at this, it comes out for the first six columns and everything is replicated above and below. And so basically it's a reflection. So what's here is reflected above. Now, once you get past that, the, the, the symmetrical reflection no longer works. But the reason why it's here is actually pretty simple to, to understand. And it's that this is formed by these factors coming down. So this comes every other row because it's two, which means that it has to be there and there. It has to be there and there. This one hits a three, so it has to be up by three and down by three. There's no other way around it. And then we go up by three, down by three. Now in reality, this structure is continuing forever. It's always up by three, up by three, if you go this direction, and then down by three, down by three, down by three. But where these line up is when it all hits on this at the same exact time on this row. Whenever there is something lined up, it will reflect on the rows above and below it. As you go further to the right, the symmetry that you can see in here does break. It doesn't continue forward. But what's, what's really fun about this 120 is that you can tell 120 has factors of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are all factors of 120. We can also tell eight is a factor as is 10 and 12 and 15. And this is 20 and 24 and 30. Um, and we can just follow this out. Every time that there's one here, 40 is a factor. Um, well, we know that those are, you know, basically 120 is divisible by these numbers. That's how you can look at it. But the important part is this part here, this line one to six, that gives us our reflective point. Once I realized that this reflection was occurring, I also realized two other things that go along with it. First, if we want to create a reflection point around any number of columns that we want, you can just look for a factorial. After all, this could be represented by six factorial. In fact, it's not because 120 is actually five factorial, but this factorial part is that, and we get the six one for free by accident in this case. It just happened to line up that way. Um, more on that in a minute though, but the important part is I can make a, a five factorial and get this part right there just by knowing that we're multiplying one times two times three times four times five. Those have to be then factors of the number that we're looking at because I just multiply them together. That means that I can make an arbitrarily long line here. Um, the, the, the total result, the, the integer that it represents is going to be a huge number the more that I put on there, obviously. But that section at the very beginning, I can make repeat the, the, um, the pattern at the front as, as long as I want for however long I want to go. If I want to repeat 100 rows, I just look at the 100 factorial um, por portion and then 100 rows above and 100 rows after will be I uh, uh, it will be reflected and it will look identical also the first six of these will look exactly the same as if we come up here the first six rows of this so underneath this little structure as you can see is it slopes down and has that if we go back to 120 really quick it slopes down and has this little structure. This is exactly the same as what's at the top, the top of the graph. And that should come as no surprise, again, because this is where the points all land on the line. And if you look up here, we started on row one. So what would row zero be? If you think about it, row zero would have one because every single one has one. It skips down two, so it would have two. It skips down three, so it would have three. Same thing for four, five, six, etc. So row zero actually would have every single cell filled in if we just continued this pattern up the other way. And then if we continue the pattern, it would reflect in the opposite order. So it would reflect this 
above in the negatives if we were viewing this as a um, as a true map to numbers i want to be careful here this is a model so you don't want to push it too far when it comes to number theory i do think it will shed insights for us in that but don't uh don't try to break math using this method this method is better to discover things for instance just to show you a way i could break math with this if we know that we can just fill in all of these cells for the zero mark that's equivalent, as I just said, to finding a factorial. So if we had infinity factorial, it would be equivalent to zero on this. Now, clearly infinity is not zero, but if I wanted to make that claim using this, it would be easy and trivial to say, hey, if everything's filled and we can fill this by just saying, I want to see what one times two times three times four is, that guarantees that we have that list, even though 48 is not four factorial. On there actually what is four factorials four times three is 12 times 224 yeah so four factorials actually here um any case before i sidetrack myself too far uh as i was saying this is the first thing that i noticed is is that if we want to create a reflection point we can just get a factorial and make it out arbitrarily long and there we would have the the uh the factor field reflected both up and down from that point for however many arbitrary numbers that we go out uh, again if i wanted 100 i can make it 100 if i wanted a million i can make a line of a million and the first 1 million rows will look exactly the same from here so 1 million and one you can just tack 1 million one on this uh factorial so do 1 million factorial plus one would be the identical looking from here because we can't see all the way to the right so since we're narrowed in on the left side this first million columns will be correctly reflecting this from the point of, of row one so again this, this this to me this is really fun so I, i'm going to try not to sidetrack myself too much so what i find most interesting is actually we also have this eight here but in between is the seven the seven is off now when we realize that this is just identical to replicating patterns so we've got this one and two and three and four and so on then we should have a similar pattern if we just double 120. So let's go ahead and go to reference A240. So we'll double it. And look, there you can see. Here we've got the same 1 through 6. And it reflects exactly the same way in this little box on there. And it also has the 8 over here. But the 7 is now 2 away. So it used to be on this square. Now it's up to this square. What would happen if we added in another 120? So 240 plus 120 is going to be um, 360, I believe. And there we go. Um, now the 7 is up here. So it's moved another one up. Now we know that because the 7th column is looping by 7s, and each iteration of 120 rows that this, this factor here bumps up by 1 when we're looking at the graph, then that means that we only need four more to get this one to line up with this row. And four times 120 is 480. We're on 360 right now. 360 plus 480 is uh, quick, 8, 8, 840. Let's make sure I did the math right in my head. Yes, yeah, so and there we go. And now you can see seven is on the line here. So this sequence here now goes all the way up to eight. And again, if we go down to by 8 here, we can see that this re, this replicates everything that we've had before. And again, you can see this, this little branch thing comes down, this comes down. And like I said, um, if you can see this down to the first 8 rows here, when it has this pattern, if we go all the way back up to the top and we look at the first 8 rows here, it is exactly the same. And let's go back, let's go back now to 840. And from here, one of the other things we can notice is the 10th row is filled in, or the 10th column. 10th column is filled in. The 9th column is off by 3. Now we're at 840 now. So what happens if we add another 840 to this? So 840 and 840 is um, 1680. So we come up here, and once again, you can see the 10th one is here. But this is now up by 6. So every single time that we add the 840, it's bumping this up by three. And we're only three away. So all we have to do is add in um, 1680 plus 840. 
and that's going to give us 2520. And here we go, 2520. And this gives us from one to 10 all in a row. And again, there's the reflection point all of those 10 rows above and beyond the 10 columns of the length. Remember earlier how I said that the zero looked the same as infinity factorial? Well, now it turns out that that's not exactly correct. It is true that infinity factorial would look like zero, but what's interesting here is we have 2520 and this is the first 10. And this actually brings me to my favorite number above 1 million. That number is 3,628,800. What's special about 3,628,800? That's the equivalent of 10 factorial. But we can see the same graph at 2520. Now, why is that so? Why is it that the first 10 factors of 2520 are identical to the first 10 that you would see at 10 factorial? The answer is actually surprisingly simple. Um, let's ask, what are the factors of 3,628,800? Well, I already told you that that's 10 factorial, so the factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's why we're multiplying together. Obviously, we can reduce those numbers. 10 is a 2 times 5, for example. But let's leave them in that state for now, because I want to compare that to the factors of 2520, using that same rule that we're not going to reduce when we're under 10 in size. So what are the factors needed to get to 2520? Well, 2520 can be divided by 8, and that gives us 315. 315 divided by 5 is 63, and 63, of course, is 9 times 7. That means that the relevant integers or the relevant factors that we're using under the, the under the size 10 are 9, 8, 7, and 5. 9 times 8 times 7 times 5 gives us 2520. What this means is that to have a number with the relevant factors that line up to be identical with the factorial we had, we do not need to multiply all those factors together like we do in the factorial. Larger numbers are made up of multiples of lower factors, and those lower factors can be ignored. We don't need 2 or 4 because we have 8, which is equivalent to 2 times 4. And we don't need 6 because we have the 3 hidden in our 9, and we have the 2 in our 8, and those combine to make our 6, and so on. So the upshot is that the number here, 2520, is actually 0.07% of the size of 3,628,800, but it can replicate the relevant portion of the graph that the 10 factorial requires. So what this means is that we don't need to go to infinity factorial in order to match what would look like at zero. For whatever arbitrary length we go up to, there's going to be something that's much smaller. In this case, 0.07% of the size, and it will replicate the same pattern on this graph. So there you go. I just thought this was a bit of fun with the factor field that I've created. I don't know that there's much use for it. I think it's interesting finding patterns such as this and seeing how they cash out in the real world. Um, and I hope that there, at least some of you do as well. With that, you guys have a wonderful day.